Good evening. It's time once again to return to those exciting premiere days of radio as KRLD presents the thrilling adventures of the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. <laughs> Faithful Ballot Cato, Brett Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet strikes again. We'll begin tonight's exciting story in just a moment. D is taking Dallas by storm. D, the new magazine which over 20,000 Dallasites subscribed to before a single issue was ever published. D, the indispensable magazine for those who want to get the most out of their city. D, the probing magazine which gives you the first inside look at Dallas's fabled power triumvirate, Stemmons, Aston, and Cullum. D, the intriguing magazine which explores the burgeoning phenomenon of Dallas private schools. D, the elegant magazine, which is giving a new voice to the arts in Dallas. D, the magazine Dallas has been waiting for. Pick up the premiere issue of D at your newsstand today or call 748-9000. D, the magazine of Dallas. The sleek black car of the Green Hornet slid through the darkened back streets of the city like a purring shadow. It was after midnight, and behind the wheel, the Green Hornet himself expertly maneuvered the long, gleaming car. He smiled beneath the grim black mask that covered his features. Then he spoke to the figure beside him. I hope you're not superstitious, Kato. Well, superstition not good for logical thinking, Mr. Britt, so I'm not superstitious. Good. We're in back of the museum now. Do you have a way to get inside? Yes, the curator's office is at the back. The receiving room where they do the unpacking of museum pieces is just beyond. It won't be difficult to get in there. I'll stop here. Come on, Kato. I'm coming. Here's the door. It'll be easy to open. Well, I understand museum protected by burglar alarm. Well, how will we get by that? I was here today at a meeting with the curator. While I stood talking in the doorway on the way out, I managed to disengage a certain wire that runs up to the door jam. I had a feeling I might want to get back in. I'll get the door open. The skeleton gauge to do the trick. Will they have guard in museum? Yes, but he's in the museum proper. He won't come into the back unless he has a reason to. Let's go in. Give me the flashlight and then follow me. Oh, here, light. Come on. There's the door to the receiving room. There's what we want to see. Why we come to look at money case, Mr. Bray? I'll tell you later. It was unboxed today. It doesn't look as though it's been disturbed. Yeah. What do you think of? I'd like to have a look inside, kiddo. Money cases usually seal hermetically. It won't be easy to Wait, open. Wait, look here, kiddo. What you have on your hand? If I'm not mistaken, it's a bit of rubber cement. I rested my hand along this edge of the case. So ancient people not use rubber cement? I know. Get me a small chisel from that workbench over there, kiddo. Oh, yes, sir. Hurry, kiddo. Here, chisel. I'll soon find out how well sealed this is. Oh, look. Lid ready to come up easily. It's loose enough to lift. And come on, help me lift it up. Look out. Oh, it's big black cat. It run over behind packing boxes. The cat business can wait. Cato, look in the mummy case. 
body of man. Mummy, not there. Well, he hasn't been dead long. Kiddo, that's the body of Gerald Loomis, assistant to Dr. Kingston, the archaeologist who... The guard, coming through the museum. Who put out light? We need quick. Come on, hurry. Who's in there? Wait, come back! Pay for Mr. Britt. What paper is it? We're Daily Sentinel. Oh, good. Gunnigan got a lead on the others for the news. Well, it didn't take them long. We've been here at the apartment only a short time. Well, let's see. Oh, so they're blaming the Hornet for the murder. Eh? Will guards see us as we leave? Yes. Well, Mr. Britt. Yes, Cato? You're not telling me what it's all about yet. Well, I'll tell you now. It all started when the Daily Sentinel helped finance an expedition headed by Dr. Kingston, the archaeologist. Oh, I remember that. With permission of certain governments, he set out months ago to locate the tomb of King Melikin, who was said to have ruled long before King Tut, but whose tomb was never found. You see, Kingston was connected with the army, and during the war found certain parchments which led him to believe he could find the tomb. Why oh, read about that. Well, the expedition was successful. And yesterday afternoon, those most concerned gathered with reporters in the receiving room at the museum to reveal the unpacking of the mummy case. It was a proud moment for Dr. Kingston when the mummy case was finally unpacked. The mummy case containing King Millican, who ruled about 6,000 years ago. Holy crow, it don't seem possible. <laughs> it's a matter of record, Axford. It will be a great exhibit for the museum, Mr. Reed. As curator here, I wish to congratulate both Dr. Kingston and the Daily Sentinel. Well, thank you, Mr. Norwich. The discovery is Dr. Kingston's. The Daily Sentinel only made it possible. Uh, Dr. Kingston, do you intend to open the mummy case today? Or uh, this is the assistant curator, Howard Washburn. Dr. Kingston and Mr. Reed. How, How do you do, do, Mr. Reed? How do you do? Now, to answer your question, Mr. Washburn, I prefer to delay opening the mummy case until my friend and assistant, Dr. Gerald Loomis, is present. Uh, why ain't he here now, Dr. Kingston? Gentlemen, so that you'll understand, let me explain something. Gerald has been very close to all this for months. Some of the legends connected with King Melikin became almost true to him. In Melikin's day, the people worshipped the black cat. Can you beat that? Must have been a pack of heads and quiet accident. Go on, Dr. Kingston. When we opened the tomb, two large black cat figures were guarding it. Is it true, Dr. Kingston, that there's a fabulous ruby set in a gold crown that was buried on the mummy? That's part of the legend. We'll know when we see the mummy. But to get back to Gerald Lewis, he became rather superstitious about the black cat, so that this morning when he received a package containing a small figure of a black cat with a printed note saying, Revenge for Millikan. It unnerved him considerably. Well, did you go to the police? Yes, of course. I decided it was the work of a crank or a prankster. And the police were inclined to agree. But Gerald wasn't convinced. He stayed away today, but promised to come tomorrow. This uh, information about the threat is off the record, of course. Certainly, Doctor. Now, who could have done a thing like that, I wonder? Well, that's hard to say, actually. Gerald said he felt something would go wrong when the mummy was uncovered. But wanted to be there just to see him. So you'll open the mummy case tomorrow, then? Yes. Without fail, gentlemen. I'm sure Gerald will be here. And I'm sure all your papers will want the story. So I'm inviting all your reporters to be present. And it was after the hearing about the threat to Loomis and his fear of being present when the case would be opened that made me determine to go to the museum ahead of time and open it. And you know the result, kiddo. Well, then body and mummy case is that of Dr. Gerald Loomis? Received black cat as threat? Exactly. 
How he got there, what happened to the mummy, and who is responsible is a mystery. A mystery that I'm going to solve one way or another. Morning, Casey. Reading yet? Oh, yes, he is, Michael. He's asking for you. Casey, what do you think about the black cats and all? Believe me, it gives me the creeps. That is the... <laughs> Don't be superstitious, Michael. Whew. That's what they told that Lomas guy. And look what it got him. It's a mystery, all right, but there's some logical explanation. Okay, I'm waiting. Explain it to me. <laughs> oh, go away. I'm busy. But anyway, wasn't the Green Hornet seen leaving the museum room where the body was found? That he was. Of course, the cops think he's behind the whole thing because of some ruby or something the dummy had on him. Mummy is the word. Sure. Mum's the word. He won't tell us all. <laughs> oh, oh, look, don't try to be funny. You said the ruby was on a dummy. You meant to say mummy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know how that harlot got mixed up with them black cats and all, but he's at the bottom of the whole thing, says I. Well, it's very simple. He found out about the black cat legend and used it to play on the superstitious nature of Hornet. Say, no. Maybe you got something there. Casey, sometimes you really talk sense. <laughs> oh, thanks. But what would the harness want with the guy that's been dead for 6,000 years, I'd like to know? You said yourself it was because of the famous Melican ruby, didn't you? Sure. But why didn't he just snatch the ruby and beat it instead of taking the mummy, too, and then killing poor Loomis? If I could answer that, I'd join the police department, Michael. Anyway, I think oh, it's hey. about time to... Here's Dr. Kingston and Inspector Evans. Good morning, gents. Good morning, Action. Miss Casey, Mr. Levy? Yes, Dr. Kingston. Just a moment, please. Yes, Miss Casey. Uh, Mr. Reed, Dr. Kingston and Inspector Evans are here to see you. Have them come right in. Yes, sir. Mr. Reed says to go right in, please. Thank you. Come, Inspector. Uh, I'll go along with you, Inspector. Well, Dr. Kingston and Inspector Evans, glad to see both of you. <laughs> I'm here too, Reed. Yes, sir. What we have to say is off the record, Mr. Reed. So if uh, Mike Axford might like to leave... Oh, we'll... don't mind me, Inspector. Talk right up. Goodbye, Axford. See me later. Huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> sure. I uh, was just leaving. <laughs> so long, Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Extra, it's quite a chap. Yes, isn't he? <laughs> Perhaps we'd better tell Mr. Reed why we're here, Inspector. Oh, yes, of course. New developments, Inspector Evans? Yes. Yeah. Of course, your paper has played up the findings of Dr. Kingston's expedition to some extent. Well, that's right. Since the Daily Sentinel financed it, we followed its progress closely. Naturally. We know that the Green Hornet is mixed up in the murder of Loomis and the disappearance of the mummy. But we believe someone connected with the project must have been working with him. That sounds logical. Now, the mummy, as such, is a value only to the museum. So we figure the motive for the crime was to gain possession of the gem, which was said to have been buried with the mummy. You refer to the Melikim ruby, of course. Yes. Yeah. If there really is such a stone... That's a matter of legend, Inspector. The mummy case was shipped unopened right to the museum. So you've told me before, Dr. Kingston. We're checking everyone connected with the case, Mr. Reed. But in the meantime, the black cat, or uh, perhaps we should say the green hornet, has reached out again. Well, what do you mean? Although Dr. Kingston takes the matter rather lightly, two more small black cat figurines have been received. Really? By whom? One by the curator of the museum, Mr. Norwich, and the other by Dr. Kingston himself. We'll continue our Green Hornet adventure in just a moment. Harold, isn't it beautiful here at the bodega? Uh -huh. And Harold... We're in an above-ground wine cellar. Mm -hmm. Harold, my lobster tastes sensational. How is your steak? Uh, good. Very good. Harold, wasn't it romantic? You know the way the hostess serves the wine? Yes, I know. Don't you think this is romantic, Harold? Did you know the bodegas originated in Spain? They were used to store wine and then became restaurants. 
This is history, Harold. Oh, I feel so uninhibited here with you in the wine cellar. Harold, why are you looking at me that way? A little more wine, my dear? Harold, you haven't heard a word I've said. I've never seen that look in your eyes before. Harold, I love you even if you are a beast. An above-ground wine cellar will bring out the beast in you. <laughs> Count them to the bodega. 8080 North Central Expressway, one block south of Campbell Center. Also now at LBJ and Preston Road. And now let's return to tonight's adventure of the Green Hornet. Inspector Evans and Dr. Kingston had entered Britt Reed's office for a discussion. And finally the inspector told Britt that two more threats had been received. One by the curator of the museum and the other by Dr. Kingston. Brett thought for a moment, then spoke. How does the curator react to the black cat figurine he received? He seemed a little nervous about it. Of course, a printed note similar to the first one was received with each figurine. Mm -hmm. Revenge for Melikum. I believe those were the words, weren't they? Exactly. It was said that if ever the mummy case of Melikum were opened, the sacred black cat would come to life and take revenge. Oh, that's very interesting, Doctor. Who outside of yourself knew of the prophecy in the parchment? The curator of the museum, Loomis, my assistant, and I were the only ones who were interested enough to delve into the prophecies of the parchment. I see. Inspector, have you started a search for the missing mummy? Oh, yes, Mr. Eden. I had men from headquarters turn that museum receiving room upside down. Looking into every empty box and crate, but we found no trace of it. Of course, a mummy is shaped like a body, but is not flexible. It would be difficult either to take away or to hide. Well, that's a very interesting point, Dr. Kingston. By the way, uh, do you have any idea of what would have taken your assistant, Gerald Loomis, to the museum, especially after he was too nervous to attend the opening of the packing case yesterday? It could have been morbid curiosity on his part. A sort of a hypnotic state of mind that drew him there, induced by the wording of that note and the little black cat figurine. Well, I don't believe that. Such a supposition is almost an admission that the black cat legend is true. People in Millicom's time believed it. Personally, I like cats, black or otherwise. Well, uh, what are you going to do about the threats to the curator and Dr. Kingston? Mr. Norwich is at his office at the museum. We have a plain clothesman posted outside the office entrance. Mm -hmm. The museum itself has been closed to the public for the time being. And uh, what about you, Dr. Kingston? I can take care of myself. We know the Green Hornet was after the ruby and did away with Gerald Loomis. I've already said we don't believe the Hornet was working alone, Doctor. I know, Inspector. But I believe he planned it. Perhaps with the help of someone like... Uh, there's someone who might have learned the contents of the parchment. Like Washburn, the assistant of Norwich, for instance? Could be. I know little about Howard Washburn. We'll have him picked up for questioning this afternoon. Well, I guess we'll be on our way, Mr. Reed. I'm glad you came in. Inspector, but Listen, uh, Sergeant Burke, I've waited all afternoon for you to bring in that assistant curator, Washburn. And now you come on, in Inspector. here. Wait till you hear. We were waiting around that museum for him to show up. I wandered into the receiving room to get a look at that mummy case. Well? Wait till you hear this. I heard a whining and scratching coming from inside it. I called Norwich and Cassidy. We opened the mummy case. Glory well, be. What did you find? A black cat jumped out. And there inside that mummy case was Washburn. Dead as a doornail. <laughs> Cato, I'm going to sit here in the living room and do a bit of thinking. Uh, I'd like some coffee. Well, yes, sir. I'd bring it right in. <sighs> Perhaps if I could recall some of our conversation today in the office. Let's see now. Kingston made an observation about the body. Of course, a mummy is shaped like a body, but it's not as flexible. It would be difficult either to take away or to hide. He's right about that. The mummy would be stiff. To hide it in a hurry there in the museum. 
He had definite ideas about the crime. He even threw a hint to Evan. But I believe the whole had planned it. Perhaps with the help of someone like uh, someone who might have learned the contents of the parchment. Like Washburn, the assistant of Norwich, for instance. Now Washburn has become one of the murder victims. I wonder. Hello? Oh, it's you, Axford. Yes, I heard about Washburn, if that's what you mean. Oh, you did. Believe me, Reed, the cops are all hit up about it. They're really laying plans to catch that murder in Green Highland. Well, what are they planning to do? Kingston suggested that him and Norwich go to the museum tonight and stay on the inside alone. Then the cops will be parked out of sight and they're outside. They'll have the burger alarm connected up in case anyone tries to get in. But the killer might be hiding on the inside already. Nope. Cops went through the museum with a fine tooth comb a while ago. Well, what about the night guard? Oh, him. <laughs> he got scared and quit. <laughs> I'm going to go along with Sarge to see what happens. If anything does happen, i let you know, Reed. Good. See you later. So long. Bye. Cato, the Green Hornet's going to the museum to try to prevent another murder and to catch the black cat killer. Come on. <laughs> sure this little gadget you invented will actually prevent the burglar alarm from sounding? How does it work? Oh, well, yes, sir. You place that small cylinder on windowsill. It set a powerful magnetic field for distance a few feet. The magnetic field reach wires of alarm around window and cause the flow of electricity to stop until cylinder removed. Fine. We'll leave the black beauty here in the shadows and go around to one of the side windows of the museum. Let's go. All right. Oh, they're light in office of Curator Norwich. Yes. Norwich and Dr. Kingston are probably there. The police must be parked near the office entrance and also at the main entrance to the museum, so we'll have to move cautiously. Let's get started. This wide ledge just under the windows comes in handy. Here goes. I've got the window unlatched. Now to see if your invention really works. I'll raise the window. Ah, there. I'm going in. Then I'll pull you up, Kato. I'll be ready. Okay, come on. <coughs> Good. I'll leave the window open. What do we do first? The Egyptian exhibit is across from here on the other side of this big display hall. There are a lot of mummy cases and mummies on display there. I want to look them over. Come on. What do you expect to find there? Well, the logical place to hide a mummy would be among a lot of mummies, Kato. Oh, is that true? Use your flashlight. Yes, sir. There they are. The door over there leads to the receiving room. The well, light shine on the door. Okay. Now we'll look over these mummies. <laughs> You find something? Yes. I'm sure I found the missing mummy in this case. Oh, yes. Wrapping around top of head looked newer than the rest. That's right. But notice how expertly it's been rewrapped. Now we go into the receiving room. Something happened in the receiving room. The killer, come on. You. The Green Hornet. You're in with that. The killer. It's Mr. Norwich, the curator. He'd been stabbed by killer. He fainted. It's nothing but a superficial wound, Cato. Never mind him. Well, let's get the mummy case open. Quick. <laughs> there's a man in mummy case. Yes. It's Dr. Kingston. Help me get him off. Yes, sir. There. Get some water from that sink over there. Hurry. Yes, sir. Here, Walter. Is he dead? No. He got a nasty blow on the head. But he must have stabbed Norwich in the struggle, and that weakened the blow. But then Dr. Kingston tried to kill Curator? No. The black cat killer is Norwich, the curator. 
Kingston must have carried a knife for protection. Well, I had idea you suspect Dr. Kingston. I did until I saw the wrapping on that mummy. Only an expert could have done it so well, such as the curator or his assistant. Norwich's hands are covered with cat scratches, and he finally gave himself away by putting Kingston in the mummy case. Will we leave now? Well, first we'll bring the mummy back in here. Then I'll leave a note for the police. Kingston's testimony will do the rest. Let's get busy. When we leave and remove your little gadget, the alarm will bring the police in for the catch. Hey, Inspector, the killer's getting in. Come on. Hurry, Sergeant. Wait for me. Here come the rest of the boys. Okay, men, bust in the door. Come on, boys, now. I want to... This is the office. The receiving room's through there. One of you boys shut off that bell. Okay. Okay. Glory be. Look there. Kingston and Norwich both lying on the floor. Kingston. Are you all right? Inspector uh, Evans. What happened here? Hey, sir. Look it here. Here's an all pinned on Norwich. Bring it here. I'll take it. Here it is. What does it say? Norwich beat me to the ruby. He's the killer you want. Since I can't have the ruby, I'll see that he doesn't have it either. Signed, the Green Hornet. It's a trick. He's trying to put the blame on Norwich. Oh, no, it's true. No, which is the killer. He came at me with, with that chisel there on the floor. I stabbed his arm. He struck me. And then I remember him putting me in the mummy case. That's all I remember. Hey, Inspector. The mummy's back in the case. Uh, well, well, what do you know? Uh, well, uh, yes, the wrapping's been removed from the head and then put back. It's newer than the rest of the wrapping. It took an expert to do that, though. Meaning Norwich? Possibly. We'll get the truth from him before we're finished. Now, that heavy chisel is a murder weapon used on the other two. Take up the fingerprinting, Sergeant. Yes, sir. He must have kept it hid somewhere. We looked all over the museum. Hey, Norwich, look here. What's that you got? Well, see it for yourself. It was on Norwich's desk. Uh, some sheets of paper from the museum heading on them. <laughs> well, there's printing on the top one. What is it? It says, Revenge for Melikum. Norwich was going to pin that to Kingston's body, I guess. Didn't get a chance to tear the heading off. We'll match that paper with the other notes. Also the printing. That'll clinch the case. Take them away, boys. Holy crow. That revenge stuff really worked after all. Imagine the green hunter doing a job for a guy that's been dead 6,000 years. <laughs> I guess he's the one who put that dummy back in the case, eh, Sarge? Mummy's the word, Ashford. Huh? Oh, Sure. I won't tell a soul, Sarge. Ah, <laughs> uh, shut up, you dope. Let's like me. Let's find John Richmond, Bessie, Paul, and Ruby return Green Hornet and Bob. Read all about it, Green Hornet, Mill and Large. Set the left tree. Let's find. KRLD, you're reliving the exciting days of early radio. Tonight's broadcast of The Green Hornet will continue following this brief pause. Europe, Africa, and Asia were unloaded today for the grand opening of our new Pier 1 import store. Tomorrow, Mexico, South America, and Australia uncrate their most tempting wares. We're filling our shelves with customs inspected cargo from the world's finest craftsmen. Furniture, rugs, exotic foods, a bazaar of items waiting for you during the grand opening of Pier 1 Imports, the marketplace of the world. New store in Dallas, 13330 Preston Road. These popular radio dramas, created by George W. Trendle, are a copyrighted feature of The Green Hornet, Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. And that's tonight's KRLD presentation of The Green Hornet. Be listening again one week from tonight at the same time for the next thrilling chapter in the life of Britt Reed and his constant companion Cato on The Green Hornet. Tomorrow night, KRLD invites you to relive again the days of yesteryear when the Lone Ranger rides again. That's tomorrow night at the same time on KRLD. <laughs>